happening uh, as I went through. And uh, again, there was huge excitement. You know, what is this ride going to be like? What are we going to do? And so we're going to see, uh, and interestingly enough, uh, Tony Baxter, Bruce Gordon, and uh, John D. Stone were in charge of it out in California. When it came to be built out here in Florida, they put it under a whole new team of Imagineers, under uh, Eric Jacobson, uh, to do that. So uh, what we're going to see now is we're going to see Mark Price. Some of you may remember him from the Disney Channel. Uh, uh, show us uh, Splash Mountain. And we're going to have uh, Eric Jacobson uh, take us on a little splash. I'm going to talk just a little bit more, and then we're going to wrap. No, we won't wrap things up because we want to show that special thing connected only with Walt Disney World, Splash Mountain. Okay, we'll take a look at the Mark Price. Splash Mountain, you seen this? This is Disneyland attraction, and they've outdone themselves. It's it's across between Big Thunder Mountain and Pirates of the Caribbean. All in one ride, and it, it's a it's a log ride. It's, it's fast. They used to do the show Win, Lose, and Draw and, and, and it's on the Disney Channel. And it's, it's over here, let me show you. summer of 1995, so this is three years after Splash Mountain opened, is Disney decided that they needed a uh, prospector uh, who would uh, be prospecting on, pay no attention to what's going on. <laughs> uh, they needed a prospector who was going to uh, direct people, believe it or not, to Splash Mountain, because Splash Mountain had only been open three years, some people didn't understand that because some people would only come to the East Coast and so you had a live performer and so today we're familiar with with Streetmosphere and all of that but Streetmosphere really only didn't develop until 1989 and for the studios and so I have a special one-of-a-kind treat for you today of a, a little clip of the live prospector in summer of 1995 uh, a little bit of his gig um, and depending upon your reaction to that, I'll let you vote because I want to be respectful of your time. I also have another one of a kind a little segment to show you after that. But, you know, just as they repurpose, um, oh, okay, there we go. Just as they repurpose um, uh, audio animatronics, they'll also repurpose. Um, live performers. So if you're performing as something, they may move you to something else, and before you know it, by golly, you prospect your back in Frontierland! <laughs> An old gold miner! This is 1995, summer of 1995. And that little raccoon puppet there, there is sound, and it'll be coming, I think. It's backing up right now. 
Uh, I had a little raccoon puppet called Clementine, and it was a spring puppet, so it could spring up into the air. Claire, you're not. No, no, be nice. Don't get irritated when you don't got in your ear. I don't understand that at all.
I didn't think that in 95, but it's looking at it now. You still have the puppet? Huh? You still have the puppet? I still have the puppet. I still have the whole outfit. I actually wrote the script because it was uh, improv. Yeah. Um, uh, doing through that. Now, again, I want to be respectful of your time. I have one more clip. You get to decide whether you want to see it. Yeah. That same actor who's Prospector Pat was so successful, was so beloved, they never had a Prospector Pat ever again, but they moved him over to Merlin and the Sword and the Stone yeah. ceremony. Now, this year is the 30th anniversary of Merlin and the Sword and the Stone ceremony uh, at uh, Disneyland. 1983 with the introduction of the new fantasy land, Tony Baxter's particularly put in a sword and a stone for that for that to do to draw people to the carousel because the carousel had been moved back from where it was, and then in 1993 uh, was the first uh, Merlin sword and the stone uh, performance out here at Walt Disney World. The last one was August 15th. 2005, and the reason I remember that particular date and can't remember other people's birth dates is because that's my birthday, it's August 15th. And so I went and saw the last performance of Merlin. But in 1995, there was a dashing young man playing, <laughs> playing Merlin at, right before he moved to the Disney Institute in 1996. So here's Merlin, and then we wrap up, we get goodies. Here we go. At the end, to stay exactly as they are, and everyone else holding the rope, be very careful, watch the people behind you, and step back very slowly, very carefully. Here we go. Yes, yes, yes. Good further. So good further. Oh, yes. Need one more step. One more step. So be very careful you don't step across it, or you might get swept up in a magic show. <laughs> oh, like that one there. <laughs> All right, gather round. It's time to begin. Well, we'll try that again. Candidate, 
It may take a little Ooh. magic. And luckily, I have brought with me my bag of magic and spells, which, as you can see, is apparently empty. Oh dear. Uh, uh, well, uh, no matter. All it takes is a little ingenuity, and I shall produce a royal ruler selecting bird. And this bird will fetch for us a new ruler. And I need all your help. After I finish my magic spell, I'll point at all of you, and everyone must say in a very loud voice, Alakazam. So let's try that, shall we? was excellent. That was excellent. All right, here we go. Pickety, 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 bird. I need a royal ruler to let me burn. Yes, that Alakazam was very good. I think that did the trick. Let's see what we have here. Oh, yes. I think you did quite well. Here is the temporary royal ruler. Did you? 
We're going to need some help from you, Satyan. Come over here. Zach's going to need some inspiration to make a strong man pose like you do in front of the mirror at home. Oh, look at this, ladies. You'll be available after the show. Now, Zach, think courageous thoughts and pull on that sword. It will help with the magic word, which is... It's time for your first official proclamation. You may make any law you want, like staying up past your bedtime, eating chocolate all day long, anything you want, and all of us follow it. So right now, think carefully, go right ahead, make up any law you wish. Hey, hey, what is this? Just a second, just a second. I am... Oh, dear. I am so sorry, Your Highness, but finding you took so long, your reign as temporary ruler of the realm is already ended. <laughs> my sadness, I would like to present to you this royal medallion, an official proclamation commemorating your time as our monarch, King Zach, and you, Satyam, oh, uh, for your fine work, sir, you will receive uh, the memory of <laughs> But the reason the hat is so straight is because it has a strap. So every time you open your mouth to talk, it is pulling your jaw directly back up there. Jim, can yes? You, can you do the voice one more time? Oh, yes. Uh, the new temporary royal ruler of fantasy land. watch the movie <laughs> and over and over and over and it's just there. Uh, uh, oh, uh, I was never thinner in my entire life. The costume weighed. We actually put it on a scale because I would come off and I would be drenched in sweat. 50 pounds because I had this big huge wooden hourglass. Why they gave it to me because I only use it one time in the bit. The bird would poop over your head. Uh, you had to be trained how to handle the bird. We had to stop using the birds because hawks would say, there's Merlin, it's time for lunch. There's Merlin, it's time for an appetizer. So we stopped using uh, the birds uh, uh, for that and again, Yes, all of those things boxed up and I would have to run off and then kids would come up for autographs um, thinking that I was uh, Father Time, uh, Page Master, which was a very popular film at the time, uh, uh, all of that. Um, the, uh, the mechanics and the tech was on top of um, 
the the Mickey shop that that's uh, the okay. brave little tailor and uh, Sir Mickey's. yeah Sir Mickey's and so he was on top there. They would cancel a performance if there was rain, not because of me, <laughs> not because of my costume, but because of the tech up there with just an umbrella. And so that that was that was it. So sometime we'll talk about uh, Merlin and all that. But uh, again, I, I like you guys so much. This has never been seen outside the Corcus household. And again, some of you may never have seen the Merlin show at all. Uh, and so this this was a nice little trip. Thank you for spending so much time with me. And, uh, Uh, I, I have brought books. You don't have to buy books to be my friend. It helps. Uh, but, but again, if any of you want a book or you want an autograph book, or seriously, if you want, sometimes people want an autograph book for for a gift. They don't want a name on it. Just just sign your name, Jim, and do something. You know, so it looks like I know somebody who's sort of famous. Um, now with Splash Mountain. Uh, it was the most expensive attraction ever built up to that time by by Disney. It was $75 million. It was also the very first Disney attraction featuring Disney cartoon characters that was ever built outside of Fantasyland. And it was an immediate hit and it's still a huge hit today. So I'm going to turn this back over to... Ke oh, but let's give Mr. Johnson a big round of applause for James <laughs> I'm going to turn this over to Kathy and we'll go from there. Well, me. Hold on, Jim.